Right, well I guess summer's over for good now. Time to see what the stats are like for September 2024. We have a 6.8 kilowatt peak array split east and west, so 3.4 kilowatt peak on each side, going into a Give Energy battery system with a combined capacity of 14.7 kilowatt hours, so a 9.5 and a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery combined, and those are both going into a Gen 2 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. We also have a Toshiba air to air heat pump system that runs our heating in the winter and cooling in the summer, and finally, we have a Mixergy IHP integrated heat pump cylinder that runs our hot water and CAT also has an EV which is a currently a Fiat 500e. Okay so let's start by generating the monthly report. So what I've done here is I've gone to my Give Energy web portal. I've clicked on reports here and that's brought up this page. I'm going to hit monthly as the report type and select September generate report. And here we go, we've got the monthly generation, which shows we've generated 373 kilowatt hours for September. Now this is absolutely dreadful compared to last year, I'll show you that in a second. Um, but you can see we had a brief period in the middle where things were looking pretty decent, but uh, very quickly fell away and the start of the month wasn't that much better either. The best we managed, right in the middle there, 24 and a half kilowatt hours, which, uh, yeah, I mean, even for an average September, that would be pretty mediocre. We consumed just a little bit more than that, 380 kilowatt hours. So that gives our generation to consumption ratio pretty much one to one. Um, and that's relevant later. I'll show you that for the choice of tariff um, based on my rule of thumb. And I'll, I'll just scroll down just to show you briefly what happened with the battery. Um, you can see we've uh, um, charged 399 kilowatt hours and we've discharged 357 kilowatt hours. The rest of that goes out to losses and things like that. Um, and you can see the, uh, the daily grid usage uh, for the month totaled 470 kilowatt hours. The big spikes here are where we charged CAT's EV. And if I scroll all the way up to the top here, this is my favorite energy flow graph. Um, things are all looking kind of even now. So solar is going, you know, roughly in thirds to the home, the battery and the grid. The grid is powering the home and filling the battery and the battery is then going to the home and also out to the grid. So we were on uh, regular flux for um, pretty much all of September, in fact all of September. So I was charging the battery overnight um, uh, in the cheap, well the cheaper part of the flux tariff and then I was exporting a good chunk of that back to the grid during the 4 to 7 p.m. Um, period so uh, that gives me a little bit of an arbitrage between the import rate overnight and the export rate during the, that peak period so uh, that helped um, improve the uh, the overall earnings for the month which I'll show you in a, very shortly. So as I mentioned a few seconds ago the generation for September was 373 kilowatt hours which was absolutely dreadful way down on last year's 463 kilowatt hours and about three standard deviations lower than what we would expect based on the PVGIS estimate. Um, so yeah, unusually low, uh, probably one of the worst Septembers that uh, we're likely to ever see. So I'll be interested to see if anybody else has had such a bad September. Let's hope it's not um, indicative of um, a, a busted panel or something like that. Um, hopefully it was just due to the weather. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see as we go further into the winter, see if that uh, trend continues with any luck. We'll uh, get a little bit better generation, um, relatively speaking, for, for the rest of the winter because that really helps out with the heating. And I'll show you that next. So as we move into autumn, the uh, heating has gone on. And in fact, we used the heating for two days in uh, the very end of September, amounting to a total of 16.19 kilowatt hours. Um, the numbers are very low. So, you know, it, the fact that this looks like it's relatively high compared to the expected when the numbers are so low, who really cares? Last year, we didn't use any heating in September, but we did use some cooling. Um, but I've excluded the cooling from this particular chart. This is only showing space heating. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, how we get on with the rest of the year relative to this blue shaded area, which is based on the modeling work I did a couple of years ago. Now, I'm not sure that this is really um, relevant anymore because we're applying a different strategy this year compared to the previous years. We're now using the cheap overnight period to boost our heating in the rooms um, other than our bedroom to uh, effectively pre-warm the house using super off-peak uh, electricity. And that means that we need less electricity during the day to run the heating, which hopefully will mean we need less peak rate electricity uh, if the battery was to run out. So we found in December, January, February, um, well last year uh, in, in December and January, we would um, start to use a little bit of peak power 
um, when the battery ran out because we've got 14.7 kilowatt hours of battery and in the coldest days that is insufficient to run the heating which means that uh, we would have to start drawing from the grid at peak time. Now that's okay because it's pretty rare that that happens but by preheating um, the house overnight during the uh, off-peak period that means we should need less heating during the day and therefore reduce the amount of peak uh, import that we need and that was certainly the case after we switched to that strategy in mid-January last year we found that we didn't need any peak uh, import for the rest of the winter which was fantastic so it'd be interesting to see if uh, we've been able to reduce the peak import for the um, the whole of the winter um, coming up so uh, uh, stay tuned for a, a much more detailed stats video on that particular aspect at some point near the end of the winter. As for the rest of the consumption, you can see that uh, we uh, consumed a total of 380 kilowatt hours of which 236-ish uh, was just the standard house load, you know, bits and bobs going on in the house. Um, 75 kilowatt hours was the EV, so pretty standard. That seems to be roughly what we're doing nowadays. I think because Kat's gone down to two days a week, so her commute is a little bit less than it was um, sort of earlier on uh, this sort of time here where we were using more like 100 um, kilowatt hours per month for the EV. It seems to be settling down to around about the 75-ish um, ballpark. You can see that the heating was 16.19 uh, kilowatt hours. Hot water, 42 kilowatt hours. Compare that to last um, September, 115.4 kilowatt hours, entirely down to the fact that we're now using the Mixergy IHP heat pump cylinder, which means that the amount of energy we require to run our hot water is significantly lower than, um, it, than it used to be. Uh, it's actually probably a bit more, relatively speaking, to um, what it would have been last year, because last year we actually went away for a week's holiday in September. We haven't been away this September. We're in fact going away in October instead. So that'll be interesting to see how much of a difference that makes um, compared to last year's October data. So uh, look out for that one um, at the beginning of November. Uh, you can see we've also started to use our dehumidifiers a little bit and uh, that will probably continue throughout the rest of the winter. We'll use those as required to keep the humidity down. Stop it getting too high. Once uh, it gets above about 60%, I'll stick the dehumidifiers on to just uh, pull that back a little bit below 60% just to keep it a little bit healthier and more comfortable in the house. You can see also the towel rails have gone on. That's going to be basically the case for the rest of the winter as well. 5.66 kilowatt hours. That'll probably creep up a little bit as I slowly increase the amount of time that the towel rails are on for overnight. So I, I run the towel rails overnight during the off-peak period. Um, they're currently on for, I think, about half an hour. I'll probably notch that up to 40 minutes in October and increase it maybe to an hour or so um, you know, during the, the colder parts of the winter. Um, but that just uh, makes sure that the towels are nice and dry for when we get up in the morning. And um, so you can see the whole thing totals 380 kilowatt hours. Now, some people ask me how I get these numbers. I'll uh, just run through very briefly. The EV uh, charger, we have the Give Energy EV charger and the data that um, we can get that through the app or the web portal. And that tells me the totals that, we can, uh, that we've been using for the chargers. Uh, for charging the car. Um, the air-to-air -air, um, uh, air heat pump systems are plugged in uh, using outside sockets and they go into a set of Give Energy um, smart plugs. Uh, so they're in a weatherproof box on the outside of the house um, and that gives me the um, energy consumption data for those. Um, the Mixer G cylinder gives me the, the, the daily data which I just total up into the month um, and ditto the dehumidifiers and the uh, tower rails are also on um, Give Energy smart plugs, so I use uh, those to give me the energy consumption uh, for that. So uh, that uh, is a little brief summary of how I come by that data. So I mentioned earlier that we were on regular octopus flux for the month of September, and how did that compare to the other choices that we could have made? Well, well was I correct to switch from intelligent flux, which we were on um, in uh, most of the, the summer, was I correct to switch to regular flux for September? Well, based on my rule of thumb calculation, uh, you can see that um, the rank ordering of uh, best to worst for uh, September would have been, Intelligent Go would have been the best, followed by Flux, followed by Cozy, followed by Intelligent Flux with regular Go uh, being the worst option out of those four smart tariffs from Oxpus. So we were basically correct to switch from Intelligent Flux to regular Flux for September. We're unable to get Intelligent Go currently because we don't yet have a compatible um, EV or um, EV charger. The Give Energy EV charger is not yet compatible with Intelligent Go. I hear rumors that it should be on its way, but it seems to be taking forever. So I'm really hopeful that somebody in Octopus will uh, 
launch that officially at some point soon. Uh, it's very frustrating. I was hoping that it would be ready by now, but um, such is life. Um, I'm going to be switching to Go for October, so um, I'm expecting this to change quite significantly in October because the generation is dropping very fast. Our consumption is going up very fast as well because the heating's gone on. But you can see for um, uh, September, our, as I mentioned earlier, our the ratio between our generation and our consumption was essentially uh, one to one. Um, so based on that, if I look at the um, uh, the um, relative cost chart that uh, for my rule of thumb, if I read up on this uh, x-axis here where the ratio of generation to consumption is one, you can see it pretty much matches with what I was showing there. Um, Intelligent Go was the best option, followed by regular flux, followed by Cozy, followed by Intelligent Go and Go being the worst. Um, and if I flip back very quickly, you can see that um, the rule of thumb is this blue, these blue bars here. But what actually happened based on our half, meet, half hourly meter data from Octopus is the red values here. You can see I got it a little bit wrong for Intelligent Flux. Um, and uh, these other ones are a few quid out. But the rank ordering is basically exactly what I showed in that other chart. Um, so uh, I'm still pretty pleased with my rule of thumb. It's more or less behaving itself. So uh, the situation is going to be slightly different in October because the tariff rates have all changed again. And uh, the now the uh, daily export rate for things like Flux uh, is actually now um, lower than the uh, overnight import rate for Flux. So that means that my strategy of filling up your battery during the day and then discharging um, any excess solar to the grid um, is no longer the optimal strategy. It's pretty close because the values honestly are, are quite close to each other. But I'm going to make a slight adjustment to my rule of thumb um, spreadsheet to account for that. It's always been the case for, for regular go, in fact, because the um, the export rate is 8 pence and the import rate was uh, 8.5. So, um, you know, it's always been the case for regular go. But um, I, I assumed that the, the difference of 0 0.5 pence was not really enough to make it worth me worrying about that at the time. Uh, now that two tariffs are now in that situation, I'm going to have to uh, think a little bit more carefully about how I integrate that into the rule of thumb. Um, over the winter, it doesn't really matter so much because Intelligent Go is almost certainly going to be the best option. Uh, if you don't have a very big battery, Cozy is probably not a bad shout. But for me, Intelligent Go is absolutely guaranteed to be the, the best option for winter. So um, I'm not too bothered currently that the, uh, that the calculation isn't optimal. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure I make that adjustment for those of you who are um, particularly interested in uh, getting the, the details right. Even though it's a rule of thumb, it's not supposed to be completely precise. You know, it's a ballpark figure just to give you an idea of roughly the, the rank ordering of these things. Um, but yeah, even so, I'd still like to uh, make that adjustment. So uh, watch this space. I'll have more in a future video at some point, um, hopefully in the not too distant future. And finally, here we are with the financials. And you can see that for September, we made a saving of about 120 quid, mostly because um, the uh, actual equivalent, the equivalent cost um, of what it would have cost us based on um, the standard flexible tariff. And if we'd had gas for our central heating and we had a petrol car instead of a cat's EV, then it would have cost us 120 quid, but it actually cost us basically nothing um, or pretty much net zero. Uh, but we also got um, a couple of quid back for one of the free octopus um, sessions. It's a bit of a fake saving really because obviously, you know, we consume, consumed more during the peak period than we would have done, but that then got paid back to us because it was um, over and above what we would have done. So um, yeah, total savings, £120. So it's a bit lower than we were um, saving during the summer. Um, I suspect that's going to start creeping up again as we use the heating a little bit more as it did last um, autumn. You can see here it actually dipped down in October, November, and then it started creeping up again during the winter. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that pattern um, manifests during um, this winter as well. So yeah, that, there we go. Uh, total savings for the 12 months from October last year through to September this year, best part of £2,000. And our actual bill um, would have been about 300, oh, well, was £364 for the last 12 months, but we also uh, earned about £108. So um, 250 ish quid um, for the rolling 12 month uh, bill for this house. So there we go, there's all your stats for September 2024. If you're not already with Octopus and you are intrigued by some of these uh, interesting smart tariffs I was showing, please feel free to use my referral link and that will get us both £50 off of our next bill. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. 
Um, there's also a different option if you want to support the channel. There's a buy me a coffee um, option. So take a look at the end of the video. I'll uh, put up a link to that as well, should you wish to throw us a couple of quid for uh, all the spreadsheets and other bits and bobs that I uh, produce for you guys. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.